Ayobami Adebayo was born in Lagos, Nigeria. A debut novel, Stay With Me, won the Nine Mobile Prize for Literature and was shortlisted for the Bailey's Prize for Women's Fiction, the Welcome Book Prize, and the Koanin Manuscript Prize. It has been translated into 20 languages and the French translation was awarded the Prize List Africuis. Ayobami holds BA and MA degrees in literature in English and an MA in creative writing from the University of East Anglia. And on today's episode of Auto Interview, it's a pleasure to have Ayobami Adebayo on the show. Welcome on the show, Ayobami. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's my pleasure to have you featured on P English Literature. Quite a joy. Thank you. Yeah. So, Ayobami, could you tell us about your first novel, Stay With Me? How does this book come about? What inspired you to write Stay With Me? Um, so, Stay With Me is, is peculiar in that, I mean, like many books, I guess, there are several things that came together, you know, mm. um, to become the book. But I really started thinking about it um, when I was in the university. And... One of my friends had passed on um, as a result of uh, being born with sickle cell disease. In fact, there were about two or three of them that passed on within about a, I guess, a three-year window. Wow. So it was something that I was thinking about at that time. But for one of them, I happened to run into the mom um, somewhere and was just struck by how she had been changed. You know, I, she was someone that I'd known for a while mm -hmm. and she had changed so much in such a short time. And you could really see the effect of grief on her. And, um, for, and the other person, we had gone as friends, you know, to visit the family. Mm -hmm. And one of the aunties saw us at the door and said, you know, you guys can't come in because it would be difficult for his parents to see you right now, you know, having just lost their own child. Oh. Thinking, you know, about, you know, relatives, sisters, siblings, parents, and even the people who were born with it. Mm. So I remember I wrote a short story that sort of had that experience at the heart of it. Oh. And at some point when I finished that short story, I it just struck me that there was more to the story. Um that there was more to the story that I was telling. Mm. And because it struck me that there was more to the story, I then decided that I would develop it into a novel, you know. And then it took me a few years to start working on the novel. Um, but that's that's how it came about. It, it started with those experiences and then I, as a short story that then become, became this novel that is stay with me today. Wow. That's quite... A whole lot of experiences. That's quite a lot of stories. I'm quite intrigued to know about the beginning and to know about the concept behind Stay With Me. Now, let's talk about your characterization. You know, judging from your characterization in Stay With Me and mm -hmm. the twist of events that happened between Yejide and Akin. In my perception, it stylishly reveals the happening in the Nigerian society. And this, of course, you know, extends to people for the culture you know, heritage and background. I'm curious to know if you have a specific message about family, about marriage and love that you attempt to communicate through your novel, Stay With Me. Thank you. That's a really good question. Um, I like what you said there, that it's very specifically about Nigeria, but I, I do think, and that is what has happened with the book, really, mm. that it has the capacity to speak to people really literally anywhere, you know, because at the heart of it, like you said, it's about love, it's about different kinds of love, you know, um, love between a man and a woman, love between a parent and a child, love even between siblings, you know, um, there's that at play there too, so if there's a message, um, I would say that, I would say that I think that, you know, what I think happens for me mm. when I'm writing yeah. is that often I start out thinking, this is what I want to say, you know, and this is what the story is going to be about. 
And then I spend a year, two years, three years, four years <laughs> with this story. Yeah. And then I think that I, I learn things from it. You know, that yeah. there's certain things that I eliminated even to me about them. And I think that one of the things that about even about the characters that I'm creating on the stories, one of the things that I sort of was struck by would stay with me was just um I guess how complex love can be. Mm. Um how complex and complicated and all the different kinds of ways, the different forms it can take. You know, I feel that sometimes there's a linear uh, way that we can explain it. Mm. But in practice, I think it can be quite messy and um, and unpredictable sometimes. Uh, and yet quite resilient, you know. Um, so, so if there's a message, that is it. Um, but if I could just jump off, you know, the thing you said about characterization. Yeah. With Yejide's character, definitely... I was looking at the Nigerian society mm. and I guess she's an amalgamation of different things. Um, there's no specific person, but I was definitely looking at the positions that women as I expected to occupy mm. um, within the society and how that can, all the complexities of that, you know, how the ways that it can be empowering, the ways that it can be, denigrating you know but the, just the complexity of that position yeah that's quite a great one because while i read you stay with me it's quite pooling there's a lot of emotion in it you know it gives a roller coaster between these you know whether you can't predict what is going to happen actually even though some artists to, to a certain aspect you want to predict that this is going to come up next but then things change along the way so it's a lot of stories, a lot of experiences, a lot of characterization imbibed in a single book, which I consider very amazing. And I want to say that that's a great work you've done. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. so kind of you. <laughs> You're welcome. So let's talk about A Spell of Good Things. You know, A Spell of Good Things is about family secret and bond, twatted hopes and the brutal realities of life in a society reef with inequality. Without giving spoilers, would you love to tell us a bit about the making of a spell of good things? Yes. Um, so a spell of good things began with uh, a character. Um, his name is Eniola. It's a young boy. And he's somebody that I, again, started thinking about, I guess at some point in 2013, um, because I had a particular experience oh. Um at that time that made me really start thinking about the inequality that I was observing again in the Nigerian society, mm. mostly economic inequality, you know, and just how, what it means for people on a day-to-day -day level um, and what it means, for instance, for this character that I write about, Eniola, yeah. who is a young boy, is just coming of age and coming to realize the limitations that the society that he's in has placed upon him economically mm. and coming to think about how he can surmount those obstacles and just his experiences of trying to do that on his own. Um, so that's how that came about. But then he became, again, you stay with a story for a while and it continues to expand. So in your last story, it also became Wura last story, you know, and Wura Ola is this young doctor living in the same city with Eniola. She's from a well-off family. Um, she studied medicine. She's just starting her career, you know, in the health sector in Nigeria. And it's about our experience, you know, in that space, in a space where the facilities are, collapsing you know and what does it mean for a person to be a caregiver mm. in that um in that in that kind of facility to have the capacity and the knowledge of okay this is how we help this patient but the resources that you need are not available um and then it became <laughs> the story of both of their families wow. so it's 
um it's a much it's it's a much more expansive book you know than stay with me mm-hmm. you get the point of view of about nine different characters but you know it's all intertwined it's all you know their stories are interconnected yeah. and um it's it's it then also again becomes the story of their city and how despite the fact that they are divided by this um there's the, that's why the fact that there's this economic divide between these two families their their fates are connected oh. in a particular kind of way and then you know there's an election coming up and then politics gets into it too so it's it's a book that goes in different directions wow. um but i think it's really held together by Eniola and Wuraola. wow that's an amazing one and that's quite a lot to take in <laughs> that's great and coming into this now i'd love to ask you about challenges while writing your books you know you've written stay with me you've written a spell of good things and oh, we're having some other works from you so i'm curious to know if you experience any challenges while writing your books if there is any could you share with us what challenge it is and how you ultimately overcame it uh, yes, you'll definitely be getting more books from me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I mean, there's this, this all kinds of challenges, and each one presents its challenge, you know. Um, there's general challenges and then there's particular ones. So I'll talk a bit about some of the general ones. Mm. The general one is just, I guess, thinking through what does it mean for me to do this, you know, as a person, how do I finish a story what do I do after I finish it mm. um how do I get it into the world you know the, you know what's from step one to step two to step three there was all of that particularly with stay with me because it was the first book um so I mean from what you read stay with me was shortlisted for the Kwani manuscript prize if I remember correctly in 2013 yeah so it gives you a sense that I already had a manuscript of mm-hmm. the novel in 2013 it wasn't published until 2017 wow. so that's four years <laughs> um, so that's four years of um doing more work on it waiting it shopping it around um wow. hoping for somebody to believe enough in the story to take a chance mm-hmm. of publishing it yeah. so there's that challenge i mean there was that challenge you know and i think that I mean, any many first-time authors experience that. Um, it's 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 the exception where you have someone finish a book and immediately, you know, everybody's like, "Oh, this is the best thing ever. We're going to publish it." Um, if you talk to many writers, it takes a while, you know, for them to really break into mm. um, getting the book published, particularly if you decide to go through the traditional publishing route, you know, having a publisher um, take on the book. So there was that. And how did I overcome that? I think it was just persistence Mm. and just going at it again and again and again. And one of the things I did for myself then that I think was very helpful was that I started working on another book. Um, I started working on a spell of good things at some point in, in that window. Wow. Because I thought to myself, I really want to write, but maybe this one is not the first book that is going to get published. Mm. Let me start working on something else, you know. So I, I think that having the long view in mind that um, I'm not trying to just publish a book, I'm trying to um, develop, I guess, a body of work, you know, I'm trying to develop a body of work and even if nobody's paying attention to this one right now, I might as well get on with um, developing that body of work. That was very helpful. Um, and then there's the more particular ones of um, what your ambitions and goals are for, for yourself as a writer oh. and how do you accomplish that. There's the day-to-day of just trying to finish a book. You know, it, it can be a lot. And also trying to realize your own artistic vision you know um so for instance i'll just talk about one thing um for instance with both books one of the things i really had to think about was language you know uh because for me many of my characters were speaking in yoruba which is not the language that the book is written in and one of the things i had to think through is how do i communicate this in some way you know 
um, what job do I have of transferring um, the rhythm of this language, you know, the metaphors of this language into a totally different language. Mm. So those are per, so, sort of particular challenges that are between yourself and the page and between yourself and what you're trying to do, you know, just your aspiration for the work and whether you can make that happen. And um, I think most recently it's just distraction. Um <laughs> being able to stay focused on something for a stretch of time, you know. Uh, I think we're, we're, we, some people say we're in a behavior of distraction. There's so much competing for attention. Yeah. That getting anything done um, probably requires more discipline than it did before now. So, yeah, those are some of the challenges, you know, that, that, I think every every project comes with its peculiar challenge. But Absolutely, some of the challenges that I've had and um, some of the ways around them. With distraction, um, there's a time when I don't do that anymore right now. But when I was working on a spell of business, one of the things I would do was uh, put my phone in the wardrobe while I was writing, so that I do not keep checking Twitter. I used to be on Twitter, mm-hmm. and I think that's when I just slowly faded away from Twitter um, because I found that I was so distracted yeah. uh, at that time and I wasn't really getting things done. Yeah. So, yeah, that helped for a while. That's quite amazing. I love your challenges with publishing and how you overcame it. That's very inspiring. That's very inspiring. The act of perseverance, the act of waiting as well as doing something while waiting. That's quite great. And your other challenges are also very motivating to me. You know, Stay With Me is the same novel that eventually come up winning awards afterwards. So that's quite very inspiring, I would love to say. That's very inspiring. Thank you. Now let's go back to Yeji Day and Stay With Me. I'm curious to know how much of fiction or reality is contained in Yeji Day's story because she's been through a lot of emotional rides, grief, struggles, pressure, in the name of having a child, especially with the okay. fact that she consulted some spiritual healers. You know, this scenario is very rampant, very predominant, and very common in the Nigerian society. In you know, homes, child bearing has been a long time challenge. You know, firstly, I'm curious, how do you feel as a writer towards the turbulence Yejide herself has been through? Then do you often feel the pain of your own characters? And secondly, I love to ask, is Yedida's story completely fictional or based on some real events? Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, they were good questions. And, you know, with, with, with Yedida's character, uh, it was difficult to write um, because I, when, I, when I'm writing fiction, I really do get try as much as possible to get into the character to imagine myself into um the space that the person is in and particularly because with stay with me you know it's the first person narrative so Mm. i'm really there you know i i have to try to be there with her and see the world through her perspective i i remember what when i was working on it that there was evenings where you know i would spend the day writing this you know chapters about her and I would just in the evening take a wall just to clear wow. my head and get out of that mental space. Wow. But I felt compelled, you know, to keep going with this character because, like you said, this is something that many women, you know, go through in Nigeria. This is something that is 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 perniciously commonplace, you mm. know, in terms of the experience that women have. Yeah. So I I felt some kind of responsibility to bear witness to that and not sugarcoat it in any way. And just, I guess, in some way, I was hoping to present this mirror to people, you know, and say to them, do we, I mean, in terms of the Nigerians who would read it Mm. and really try to get people to think and perhaps start some conversations, you know, around why are we doing this to people? You know, why? This doesn't make yeah. any sense. Um, so it, it was difficult to write. I, I definitely do feel for my characters, wow. you know, because I really I have to imagine myself 
into their lives and um none of the things that happen to them that are you know bad is gratuitous for me um for me there are things that are that feel like that feel necessary to the story that i'm trying to tell and that's why they need to happen and even when they happen i feel a lot you know in terms of what the characters go through mm. um how much of yejide is fictional I, I didn't base that on anybody in particular you know mm. she's a product of imagination wow. but imagination does not exist in a vacuum you know imagination itself is 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 inspired um, by different things by books you've read by music you've listened to uh by paintings you've seen mm -hmm. by conversations you have had by commun your community yeah. so in as much as you know i didn't look at a particular person and say oh i want to write that person's story um definitely she's inspired by you know, just growing up around that narrative, you know, yeah. that there's something wrong with this woman because she doesn't have a child or something, you know. Um, yes. So that that she's I guess I don't I don't know what the answer would then be, that she's a marriage of both, I guess. Wow, that's amazing. Because you know, if you read, and I'm hopeful that uh, viewers who are watching would love to pick up still with me afterward. The craft tradition of Yeji Day is one that would want to pull the reader to tears. Was looking at all she has been through. Very sad, emotional, quite gripping, and a very good narrative. So that's that's Thank quite you. amazing, and it, it it got me thinking: could this be? Because this is something that we've seen in the society as a Nigerian. This is something that happened everywhere. More, I've heard stories over and over again that are very much similar to these occurrences. Mm -hmm. So it got me thinking: if it's absolutely fictional, or there's a bit of reality imbibed in it so thank you so much for your answer to that thank you thank you yeah so also i want to ask you you know as authors we all have different ways of reacting to feedbacks and criticism of our works i'm curious to know your opinion about criticism how do you react to negative criticism of your books mm -hmm. if you've ever had one in time past no i mean i think everybody has that um and I think that, I mean, there, there are all kinds of ways to respond to it. Um, there are times when you look at it and you're like, oh, well, this person has a point, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think there are also times when you 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 look at it and you're like, well, this person totally misunderstood what this book was about, you know, mm -hmm. because, um, I mean, criticism can come from different places. You know, that people who come to a book and, at, you know, judging the book by what did this book try to accomplish? Yeah. And they did succeed with that, you know, which, in my own opinion, is the way to go about it, you know, as someone who's done some criticism myself. But there are people who come to a book and are thinking, are trying to make the book what it's, the book is not interested in, you know. And they're like, oh, but this person did not talk about this other side of the story. But maybe that's not, that's not what the book is about. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's not what the book is interested in at all. Yeah. Um. So that the I think that that's generally it. You know that you you look at it and you're like, um, is this person thinking about what I'm trying to accomplish and maybe what I didn't really do with the book, or is this person maybe even just upset because. And I, and I think that this could happen with, you know, different kinds of books, yeah, that people yeah. have a particular way that they think books should be, and the yeah. book is not that way. Absolutely. And therefore, they're just like, this book is rubbish because, you know, yeah. it's not, you know, it's not, um, it's not so much or it's not, you know, but the person wasn't trying to do that in the first place. Yeah. So it's, it's um, it, I don't think there's a general way to, really respond to it i think it's sort of more of a case-by-case -case basis um and the most important thing is really not to be demoralized by it mm. uh because you know um critics can be wrong absolutely <laughs> can be totally off base absolutely. um there's one that i like to think about and i think it was it was a new york times review of uh I might be wrong but i think it was a new york times review of the handmaid's tale 
uh, by Margaret Hatwood, which when the book first came out, essentially, I mean, you know, it was a pan. And then the person said, you know, this is a book that nobody will remember in 10 years. And they could not be farther from the truth. <laughs> you know, oh my word. I mean, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially sort of said, you know, no, this is not, nobody's going to remember this book. Like they could not be farther from the book, from the truth rather, the decades yeah. after the book was published, right. it had a total, a, a, a massive resurgence in that people were looking at it and felt that it spoke Wow. you know to them in that time yeah. so that's the other thing not to be demoralized by it to learn what you can from it but ultimately um it's it's, it's a person's opinion and people are entitled to that yeah that's great i love your take about that not to be demoralized about it that's a great one thank you so much about that i also want to ask you ayobami as a published author what sort of advice do you have for other writers who are still struggling with publishing a book like yours? What did you tell people in this category? Oh, I mean, I, I would say, first of all, focus on the book. First of all, the book, the story, whatever it is you're working on. Yeah. Um, try as much as possible. And, and that, that was that's the way I work. Try as much as possible when you're creating not to allow anybody else into the room with you. Oh. So don't necessarily think about what would this person make of this or what would that person make of that? Because I feel like it can really make, it can prevent you from clarifying your vision for a piece of work. Mm. Because then you have all kinds of voices competing with, the voice you should be listening to, which is really that of your own creative spirit. Absolutely. Or your own creative um, heart. You know, that that's what you really want to listen to. Yeah. Because you're, you're a creator and you're going to do something that probably you're the only person who can do in that particular kind of way. Absolutely. So you don't necessarily want to start trying to do it the way another person would do it even though that person's way is brilliant and it's totally valid there's something you are going to write that i couldn't write there's something you are going to write that whatever other writer you admire is not going to write mm. so try to get that out you know of you it, it can be a lot of work um and then after that i think it's the persistence game uh, um, if you can have your network of people that you trust, their opinion, people who will be honest with you and give you feedback yeah. on your work and say this is working and this is not working. And that that needs to be balanced. They can't be people who praise everything you do. Yeah. Um, you know, they need to have a clear high. You know, you, you don't want your first readers to be people who think who say well, anything you do is genius you know you want people who will say well this is working but i don't think this quite works mm. you know? um and then you also don't want people who low-key hate your work <laughs> you know that's the other extreme of that <laughs> and you know there will always be people like that <laughs> that's fine you know um that's the other extreme uh. because you were just you'd be totally demoralized so you want to find a balance in terms of who gives you feedback yeah. and then um you want to go out into the world and try to find i guess the perfect publishing partnership um usually i mean the way i went about it i got an agent and my agents you know then pitched the book to publishers there are all kinds of other ways that people go about it absolutely but there's something I always say to people, rejection is part of the process. Yeah. You know, at every level, you know, whether you're about to get published or you've been published, you know, just you you need to develop um in Nigerian parlance, we would say liver. You have to have a backbone. Mm. I think that's the more global way of putting it. Yeah. You have to have a backbone to do this. Yeah. Um you you can't be you, you you need to 
so be strong inside of yourself because you will be rejected. There will be agents that reject you. There will be publishers that reject you. After the book is published, there will be critics that reject you. Absolutely. So, you know, there will be all kinds of, you know, waves in this. But even the greatest writers that you can think of, yeah. if you read, and, and that's one of the things I like to read, and I guess that's what I would recommend, read memoirs by writers, read um memoirs by writers who talk about their writing life it, it will inspire you it will tell you that you know this person you think is so great and accomplished they had their own difficult times Absolutely. You know, they had the times when all the agents said no they had the time where there was no publisher that would publish their work mm-hmm. that the time where they had a book come out and you know the critics panned it or whatever and you know the book eventually then went on to do very well you know there are all kinds of things they had the time when you know everything seemed to be going swimmingly um and then everything seemed to take a turn so it's it's i think it's important for your own mental well-being to just Mm -hmm. develop that spinal cord and balance in yourself um as you go into the space that's great that's quite amazing that's the whole order of her advice and I'm hopeful that viewers, including myself, would love to utilize it. So tell us, on what platform can interested viewers get a copy of your books in case we have people interested in getting a copy? Oh, yes. So um, depending on where they are, if you're in Nigeria, it's published by Weda Books. Um, so you can get it directly from them. You could get it from Ruben Heights. I yeah. guess all the other bookshops, wherever you are in the country, um, I think Ruby and I de- delivers across the Absolutely. country, or you could also get it directly from Weeder Books. Yeah. Um, if you're outside Nigeria, it's out in the UK and the US now. Um, so you could get it on from your local bookshop. Um, you could get it on bookshop.org. You could get it on Waterstones, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, I mean, all the major retailers. Yeah. Um, next month, yeah, next month, June. <laughs> yeah. We're recording this in May. In June, it will be out in Brazil. Wow. Um, and then in France. So Beautiful. usually all the major retailers in those places too. Amazing. Amazing. And I've left a link to the Amazon links, both for the US and the UK, in the description Thank part you. of this interview for viewers who love to get a copy directly. So thank you so much, Ayobami, for accepting the invitation to be featured on P English Literature. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. This this has been really lovely. I've had a really nice chat. Yeah, it's my joy as well.